today we are doing uh, B is for buttons and beads. And that is a part of, this is a part of our junk journaling A to Z um, series. This is like part two, I think. And so I've combined buttons and beads. Again, the, you know, just to kind of preface this video, this is not by any means an exhaustive list of the ways that you can use buttons and beads in your journaling, journal making, right? Um, there are so many creative ways. This is just kind of some of the ways that I use them to dress up my journals um, and my stuff that I make. I will also say at the beginning that buttons and beads are one of those things that will bulk out your books, right? So the more um, you use them in certain ways, if they're hanging out the edges of things or if they're dangling from the bottom of the book, then it's not such a big deal. But if you are, you know, including them on tags and putting them into things, just this pile here is a little bulky. So um, it also makes it hard to write. So if you're writing on a page that's got buttons underneath it or something, um, it makes it more difficult. So I try to keep my buttons and beads either to, you know, either on the edges of things or as tabs hanging off the edge of the page or on things that you can remove, like pull out. Um, if you wanna write on the page or pages, you know, where it is behind there. So I try to make it so that there are things that can pull out or be around the edges of things because, um, like I said, they do bulk them up really quick, but they also make it harder to write. And, you know, end goal of a journal should be, <laughs> in well, in most cases, not should be, but in most cases, the end goal of a journal is to write in it. So <laughs> anyway, um, I have brought along some, some of my... <laughs> collection. Um, and I just wanted to talk through some of the beads or some of the buttons that I've got. So I've got, you know, a variety of them just laying out here. I've got jars of, this is a jar of vintage beads, uh, buttons. So these are um, older and not only do they look super cool sitting on the shelf, they're also really useful. And these are really good colors because I, you know, they're like vintage brown. They're like vintage photo. <laughs> um, then I've got bead uh, buttons that are like that come from garage sales or, you know, that uh, some some of these I got in Happy Mail. Um, these is, this is just a container that I keep out on my desk. Um, but I think I've used a lot of the like more vintagey ones, but there are some real teeny tiny ones in here. And so that's kind of why I keep this one out is because it's got, look at how tiny, I mean, how stinking cute is that? <laughs> so I've got some tiny, tiny ones and these work really great in books. Um, and then I'd say this is like a pretty average size button there, right? So I've got some teeny tiny ones and you can find buttons, man. If you're really looking, you can find buttons in all different places. Um, a lot of times at garage sales or car boots, uh, you know, which you guys over in the UK call it car boots. <laughs> and then, um, or thrift stores, thrift shops, eBay, uh, fabric outlets are fabric outlet. Well, sadly, it's not mine anymore. It's in the Twin Cities where I moved from. But if we go down there anytime soon, I will probably make a stop at SR Harris because it has literally like 50 gallon drums of buttons that you can dig through. And it's, you know, like per pound of buttons, I think. Um, so you can get really good deals. But if you buy lots of them, if you buy a lot of beads, you know, you might not use some of them. Like this is a little out of my wheelhouse. This is a green flower shank button with a rhinestone, right? However, you just never know. And you might be making something where all of a sudden you're like, that is perfect, right? <laughs> Am I encouraging you to hoard right now? Probably. Um, <laughs> if anybody ever offers you buttons or says, oh, I'm getting rid of a bunch of my sewing stuff, take buttons um, and beads, buttons and beads. Like here's a really unique looking one. It's like shell on the inside and it's got a black glossy edge around it. It's just a plastic bead or button, but it'll look really cool on the right thing. 
Then I've got some super huge ones. This is a shell bead. This is a real old um, shell bead. These are some old just black buttons. This is a, a, this one's got a big shank on it. So this comes off of like, oops, let's see. Let me see if I'm doing this right. Hello, where's the camera? And where are my hands? There we go. Uh, <laughs> you guys see what I'm doing, right? Oh my gosh. Um, you would think that it was, you know, a Monday morning at 5 a.m., but it's not. It's like a Tuesday afternoon. So shank buttons like this come off like of a, a men's suit coat or sports coat or something. Um, and these are useful. They they dangle well. So if you tie them and you want them to dangle off like the end of a book, um, off of your strings that you tie, you know, your signatures that you sew your signatures in with, or if you want it to dangle in a um, tassel, these dangle really nicely that way. So I use shank buttons a lot in tassels or on the ends of books. And here are a couple more. This is a real, this like heavy duty metal one right there. And then this is, um, these are some military buttons that I got off and they came off of a military coat somewhere. So, and those are both examples of shank buttons too. And I'll show you, my friend Emily came up with a really great idea um, and I will show you well, let's, let me just show you that right now. She took a shank button because, you know, sometimes you go, what do you do with a shank button, right? She took a shank button and put it through the hole in a tag. And then on the back side, she ran a piece of ribbon through like that. Can you see it going through the little, the hole in the shank? Now, this takes some maneuvering and some finagling to get this, this, Cloth. This is a piece of fabric to get it through there. It took a little finagling, but it was worth it. And then I just put a dab of glue here and positioned the the tabs or the, the extra, you know, the ends of it. Just kind of positioned them so they would stand up. Otherwise, they want to flop down. And then I um, beaded. So now here's beads, right? I beaded a piece of embroidery floss and tied that around the extra part of the shank. And that not only does that provide some extra decoration, but it provides some extra um, tension here as well. And then down here, I have sewn some beads onto a piece of fabric to make a little cluster. So that would look super cute tucked into a book or something, right? There's we go. There's example number one. Um, beads, I use a lot in conjunction with buttons. <laughs> and one of the more common ways that I will use them is on a bulb pin right here. So you can find these on Amazon. You can find them. Lots of Etsy sellers sell um, uh, like little lots of them. Uh, I believe Tim Holtz now, um, Ranger, Tim Holtz has a line uh, uh, ones where you can get them probably in like vintagey tones and stuff too. So uh, this one and this one, I just literally put some beads and then I have a shank button. So here's another way that shank buttons work really well. I just have a shank button on the clip as well, right? So then it hangs all cute like that. And then I've just clipped it through this tiny tag. Now you could tuck this tiny tag into something or, um, where's my paper? Okay, here. You could take it on the edge of, so I've got my sewing example papers here <laughs> that I'm using, some of my sewing example stuff from my sewing videos. So you can use these tiny tags and put it on the edge of a piece of paper like this, and it becomes a tab, and the, um, the buttons just hang off of the tab, like so like that, right? So that's a great way to use it. And now the buttons are out off the side of the page, the, the buttons and the beads are off the side of the page, so it's not hindering your ability to write or anything like that. So there's another example. Or, you know, just this little tag is super kind of cute and you could put, attach it to something or you could just use it just like it, this itself. Um, 
let's talk about beads quick too before we get too, too in-depth the rest of my thing. So I've got buttons. I've got, these are buttons. Obviously someone cut a bunch of buttons off of a sweater or something. And I've got a bunch of those. I think I got those in a giant eBay lot. And in that eBay lot, there were, you know, some hits and some misses. <laughs> then I have, now I've got a whole like holder thing that holds two, four, six, eight. So 16 of these little guys. And most of them are full of beads and buttons. So I didn't pull them all over here, but I just grabbed a few. These are smaller. These are a little bit bigger. But I wanted to show you that there, you know, you can get all different kinds and sizes of beads and use them. I, I use all different kinds and sizes of beads. Um, and mine are generally mixed together. <laughs> I love these. These mushroom beads aren't these. If you haven't seen these, they are the sweetest thing. I get them. You can get them at Hobby Lobby or... Michaels or Joanne here in the cities, you probably get them on, or cities here in the U.S. You can probably get them on um, Amazon as well. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, some beads, like some strings of beads, this one has a teeny weeny little hole, so that'd be pretty hard. But, I, so, tons of beads, and wherever you find your beads. I just recently scored a whole bunch of these, like, glass beads at Hobby Lobby. They were on ridiculous clearance. So I have a whole bunch of these. And these are a great size for doing tassels, beaded tassels. So you just string a whole bunch of them onto a tassel and coordinate it to the colors of your book. Um, and you just like four of those, four strings of beads, different, a little varied length. And that makes a really cute tassel. So um, then I also have a variety of wood beads. These are some smaller wood beads. I have, I mean, I've got humongous wood beads. Yeah, those are over there. I've got all kinds of beads. So um, just watch for clearance, watch for lots in the, you know, like I said, you can, you can find them all different places. But let's, okay, so now that we've talked about beads, let's keep going through my examples here. So um, one of the things that I like to do is make little clusters and my hands don't always cooperate. And that's why we are not going to be making any bead dangles today. I make them from time to time, but I have to do it on days when my hands are not hurting or, you know, feel like they want to work. <laughs> and it requires using my little jewelry pliers. And it's just that there are days when it doesn't want to happen. And same thing with making clusters, sewing buttons on. There are days when my hand can handle sewing with a needle and days when it can't. Um, so I threw a couple together this morning and... So, ta-da, <laughs> I was able to do this. So I make little clusters, and these are just fabric clusters, right? Layer of different fabrics. You can do put throw paper in there and stuff as well. And then rather than like zipping them through my sewing machine or putting a staple through paper ones or, you know, whatever you wanna do, um, I just hold them together with a button. So I just put a knot, sew through the button and tie the knot again on the back. It holds the whole cluster together and you can turn those out pretty quick. If you make a bunch of little stacks of fabric, put match buttons up and then just start sewing them through. It's a great, you know, watching a movie kind of activity or something. Um, but those are great to put on the corners of tags. You know, you can put them down on the bottom of a tag. You can put them on the corners of pages, right? So it'd be cute just on the corner of a page um, in a journal. You can make them a lot bigger or smaller. This is this big fringy one that we sewed on. You could ac accent the fringe down here in the bottom with this little cluster. That would be cute. So a lot you can do with little button clusters. I mean, these can go on lots of things. And it's one of those things you could mass make and make ahead and um, have them, you know, have a little container of them because they're great to use on things. Here's another example of one, a little button cluster, but this one, so this is on another tiny tag, right? But this button cluster, when I sewed the button on, I, instead of sewing through to the back, I sewed started from the front and left long tails. 
And then I used some shank buttons, right? Can we see that? Yeah, shank buttons, and just tied them onto the ends like this, put a little double knot in there. And now they're little danglies. They flop around. And how cute is that? And this would be cute. So you could um, use this as hanging from a tab down here. This is my tabs page. This is my tabs page from the sewing video, right? So say we have a tab like this, you could hang this, you could attach this with a bulb pin or something, and that could actually be a flappy hangy dangle from the tab. It could be a dangle, or it could, like I said, it could become the tangle, the, the, the tab itself, like this, by just gluing it on the edge. It could become the, the tab itself. Or you could certainly, you know, hang this from a page or do all kinds of things with it. You could attach it to another larger tag. You could hang this from another larger tag. Or you don't, you know, you could take the cluster and instead of putting it on a tag at all, you could just keep this as a cluster like this, but it has little dangles and use it, you know, down on the bottom of a pocket or something where these would hang outside of the edge of the journal. And then you're not so worried about having to write on those. Hope that makes sense. So little button clusters, cute, um, like real shabby chic, but they go in all kinds of different journals. Then um, while I've got my tabs page out, another way that I use them is again, here's another bulb pin and I've just layered up three buttons, right? of various sizes. So the middle one bigger, the two sides smaller. And I've just attached it to a fabric tag. And those look super cute dangling off the edge of a journal, right? They look really cute when the book is closed and you've got these little dangles. And again, it's just a super fast, I mean, that's super fast. All you're doing is curating three buttons together, putting them on a bulb pin and uh, putting them onto a tab. So that works really well. That's another way to use them to accent things. Um, here, so we made this tag in my sewing video and then I put some ribbon through and instead of like, so I like using ribbon, wider ribbon like that, but it's hard to tie through, you know, a smaller hole. Sometimes you end up with this big bulky knot. So another way to do it is find a coordinating button um, put it on the front so then you just loop your ribbon through one time put it on the front and then tie just sew it through so there's my little stitch so I and then I just tie it off in the front like this and leave the strings because I think it's a cute little addition now this is black and I should have thought about this before I you can see it right yeah <laughs> anyway um, you can leave the little strings, you can tie them into a bow. So like if you're doing a, a shabby chic journal or something where you, you know, a bow would be appropriate, you could tie that, leave the longer strings and tie them into a little bow here. And that looks really cute. You can also leave even longer strings and tie, you know, thread beads onto them. And then you've got little bead dangles and that's cute too. It just depends on how far you want to take it, right? This would be another place that you could put, um, you know, so if you've got a button up here, you could put another little button cluster as well. All right, now let's look. Oh, here, here we go. Another one of the tag journal cards that we made um, in the sewing video. And then just to add another layer of texture, I've taken a bulb pin and just like four little beads and put them on there. And it's one of those things where in the grander composition, you don't, your eye doesn't go straight to that, but it adds a layer, it adds texture, it adds a layer to the composition. And um, I think it, I think it just is nice. I think it, it just adds a little something, a little, a little special something. You can also, now we've got this little fabric here. You could push the, the bulb pin to come off the edge. So the beads were out here and then clip it into the book on the edge of a page and the beads would be hanging outside of the book. That's another thing. Here is another tag that we made in the sewing video and it had a butterfly on it. And this I've done a few times and I remembered it here and I'm so glad I did. 
This is super cute. Look at, I gave the butterfly antenna, right? Isn't that adorable? It's really easy. So I just took the button and you leave a thread out right from the back side of the button. So you sew up from the back to the front, sew through the button. This one is a four hole button. So I made a little crisscross and then your last thread will go back down, tie a knot in the back and pull it tight. And you end up with, you cut them off, you know, cut your extra threads off but pull them through and cut them off long on purpose and glue it down like that. And it becomes antenna. And then I just glue two kind of matching buttons to make his little body or her little body. But how cute is that, right? What an adorable little addition. And this would look super cute in a tuck spot. So tucked in and this was just on the edge, right? That would be so cute hanging out. Um, of a tuck spot or a pocket and uh, that's those are relatively flat so it's not gonna you know make it too hard to write over um, here's another example of using buttons to add um, this sunflower actually had a brown middle so I just took a brown button and put it in the middle cute right and then I literally along the edge here where I had sewn I put some cheesecloth and then I found three buttons that kind of matched my card and just glued them down through the the cheesecloth you could sew them down but you can just glue them on they're on they're good they're not going anywhere um so super cute uh one of the people that I think uses little buttons like this so well is Mrs. Cog she does she's so good at I mean she must have a billion buttons <laughs> but she'll line up little rows of small buttons and I she just I love the way that she uses buttons and it's super cute and that's kind of where that inspiration comes from is tiny little buttons in a row like that then let's see this is another thing that I've done um is I will take some fabric strips and layer them up like so when you're ripping fabric or if you've got little scraps and then I've just gone through I simply stitched I just lo loaded up some embroidery floss I went button bead button two beads button two beads button right and now this would look cute along the edge of a page so let's get our example out again it would look really cute along the edge of a page in a journal, but you could also um, put it in as like a flip. So if you attached it up here, it could be something that flipped up. If you make your stitches on the back a little neater than I did, although I don't mind messy sometimes, but it could hang and be just a little flip too. It could be loose on the bottom, like almost like a little flag or something, right? Or a banner. But um, you can make a bunch of strips like this at the same time, just kind of mass make. And then those are great to have. And it looks like you spent a whole lot of time coordinating a bunch of them. But if you just kind of, like I said, lay out a bunch of fabric, lay out a bunch of buttons, and then just start sewing, sew, 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 um, you can get a bunch of these done in a, in a short time. And then if you have, you know, 10 or 15 or 20 of them, um, then it, it really brings a nice cohesiveness to the book because, you know, you flip every few pages, you have another one and it kind of keeps keeps drawing your eye through. All right, so there's that. Then I was going to show you a few examples from some gifts that I've received from friends or um, uh, or yeah, kind of this journal that I have sitting here. <laughs> so this is from my friend Dee Dee and she has just on the edge of this little, it's a little tag holder, like a little pocket. And there is a bulb pin with a pearl and a key. That's it. It's so simple, but that little bead and this little charm add so much and they add just the sweetest little, you know, the sweetest little compliment on the edge there, a little detail. Then I brought along this book, and this is a friendship journal um, that I have not ever really done a flip through of, but um, this is some three lovely ladies and I did our, um, did a journal 
signature exchange. And look how chunky it is because none of us can edit because all of us are like way over chunk everything. <laughs> so this is my kindred spirits. Um, and you can see I added buttons down here because I thought it added some texture to the front of the book. And then I want to show you this fantastic tassel that my friend Amy made. And this is another way to use beads. So now this is the kind of thing that I would do um, to make dangles if my fingers were working and my hands were working. But look at these gorgeous, this tassel, you guys. It's fantastic. But some really beautiful beadwork here. And these are um, just a bunch of different beads that she's curated and she's hung on um, pins, long, long beading pins, right? So there's an example of a lovely beaded tassel. Then I wanted to show you when I put the signatures together and sew them into the book, this is along the bottom where I've, you know, so these are my sew, my sewing thread. And I do this really often. Um, I will take and leave the threads really long and then I put beads on them or charms or I'll use buttons here. This is another place that you could use shank buttons, right? Um, because they hang cool when they're hanging from their shank like that. Um, and this is just another way to use beads and add some texture to your book. And then Amy also made me some, um, she's got on some pins in here. Whoops, that one's coming off. A couple of bead dangles. So like this is another thing that I would often make would be bead dangles to hang from the edges of the book. And they're not impeding anything there because they're on the edge. They add some interest, right? Um, but, oh, I'm not even in film. Jeez. They add interest, but they're not um, going to make it harder to write. So they're technically not bulking up the book. It's just all the paper and everything that we made that's bulking up the book. And so there's that. And then I wanted to show you, this is a tassel that I made a long time ago. And I made this, and this is a different example. It's the same thing. It's their dangles. It's just a bunch of dangles. Let's see if I can find the bottom one. It's just a bunch of bead dangles, basically that have been put together onto a chain with jump rings. And then these I made out of Tracy Fox's mini tags kit. I'm just waiting for the right journal to put this on. It's been there forever and I kind of just love it so much that I might not ever find the right journal. But um, these are just wooden beads and they complement the look of this tassel and so those are that's another way that I've used beads is to create these dangles put them together this is a Tim Holtz I don't even know what you call this thing but it's that kind of clip thing and then it's got just the chain and you can attach whatever you want to it so it comes like that with the with the chain and then I've used a bunch of jump rings to put all this on so there's another way I use beads then I just wanted to, and I didn't have a, a, an example of this, and I didn't have time to put one together. But another way to use buttons is um, to, like, so say you need to, you want to make a closure. And windy guys, right? If you're new to me, that's what I call, I don't even know what they're called. I always call them windy guys. <laughs> anyway, the, the closure is where you wind around. Somebody somebody has told me at least three times what the real name is. I just continue to choose to call them windy guys. So where you, you know, like on a policy envelope where you wind the string around, instead of having to use brads, um, you can use buttons. So you can sew a button through either a piece of paper and then glue that down. Or if you are, you know, like here, you could certainly sew it right through. You'd probably want to reinforce it with something. I'd usually do a piece of fabric. And then um, sew this one through a piece of fabric and glue the fabric down. And now you've got an extra cute windy guys, right? Another thing I like to do with buttons is, let's see if I can find some, layer them up. 
So if you can find some buttons that fit inside of each other, right? It often looks cute if you layer one on top of another like that and sew through them both. That looks cute. It gives a cute look to whatever you're doing. So if you were making the windy guys closure here, you could do layered the buttons and that'd be extra cute, right? It does add bulk. Again, it adds bulk. So beware, but cute. Um, there was one other thing. One other thing. Oh yeah, I was gonna show you. So this is a uh, traveler's notebook that I've had for a while that I just keep around to put notes into. And um, it doesn't have a closure. A really easy way to make a closure is you can get this elastic cording. Camera shut off, I'm not sure why. But you can get this elastic cording right? Uh, lots of places. This is, I think, from Walmart, maybe. You can find it lots of places. Anyway, um, you want to cut a piece that is unstretched. Unstretched comes about Oh, just over twice around your book, right? Doubled over. So you've got room like this. So you've got, I don't know, that's maybe three inches of tail. So double it over. And then what we're going to do is simply string a giant button on. So let's find a giant button that we like. Well, here, this one doesn't. We're going to just use this one. This is so easy. And it's an easy way to make an easy closure that's removable as well. Okay, so we've strung the we've strung the button on, right? Now we are going to I'm gonna go like this, just hold it down with my thumb. You can glue that down if you want to, or attach it, or sew it through if you want. You can put these through the binding strings over here if you want, but I kinda of like that it's totally removable. So now I'm gonna go like this and see how far I want it to go, and then I'm gonna tie a knot. This is literally as easy as this. Okay, so we've got threaded button not on the other end and this is as easy as that is whoops you just got to make sure you don't tie it too tight so that you snap yourself that's as easy as it goes look at that easy way to use a button you could do this with twine or something it's just the elastic is nice because as your book gets more chunky you have room to grow i like to leave some threads or some threads some tails like this because um, I can untie that and retie it if I need to. Um, and this is another place that you could add some beads. If you had some beads that were big enough, you could hang them there. Or if you had, you know, a couple of cute shank buttons, smaller shank buttons, you could tie those to the bottom of the elastic as well. But that's a super quick and easy closure um, for uh, a journal, right? It just opens that quick and then you can take it off and work in your book and it's not in the way at all. So there you go. So that's kind of my brief overview on buttons and beads. Now again, like I say at the end of, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this at the end of almost all of our A to Z videos. Um, like I said, this is not an exhaustive list of how to use buttons and beads. This is just some examples. If you've got creative examples or ideas or things that you really love doing, like say there's just this one thing that you love putting buttons on or using beads in this one way, um, put those down in the comments below. And if you're watching this, I would suggest scanning through the comments because there are all kinds of really brilliant crafters that um, leave all kinds of good information, tips, tricks, hints. Um, maybe you have a place that you look for buttons and beads that you always find them and it's cheap and or you can find vintage ones in some place let us know where that place is <laughs> and we'll certainly uh you know do our best to look there too estate sales um things like that vintage stores antique stores anyway 
Guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me for B is for buttons and beads. <laughs> B is for buttons and beads. Nice alliteration. Oh, here's another example of beading. Look at, this is also by my friend Amy, the one that made that tassel. She also made me my little glue stopper. There's another way to use dangles, but that's to make your desk pretty, which is also lovely. So thanks for hanging out, guys. I will see you um, again soon with another, I think we have maybe one more bee, uh, one or two more bees. I don't know, I have to check the list and kind of condense and see what I'm doing. But thank you for hanging out with me. And I hope you have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, middle of the night, whatever time it is, on whatever side of this globe of ours that you live on. And until I see you next time, guys, stay safe. And I hope that you're able to stay healthy and uh, go outside and, and enjoy some lovely weather if you have it, you know, here in Minnesota. Meh, iffy this time of year. <laughs> but uh, I hope that you guys have a, a wonderful day. And um, I hope that you're able to do something creative and crafty. And until I see you next time, guys, take care and God bless. Bye-bye.